Thank you. With the climate change, there doesn't seem to be much difference between the weather in Toronto and New Orleans. <laughs> and uh, just to introduce myself a bit further, uh, so what I'm going to prevent is the larger uh, presentation that my students sent me this morning. And uh, so I would be looking at only a few slides and then perhaps go through a few of them quickly. Uh, and then we can discuss that during the panel discussion if the need be. Now the overview, uh, we only have one group of uh, codes, which is done by Canadian Standard Association. So the S6 code deals with the highway bridges. Um, it's a very large document and only one part of it, section 16, deals with uh, FRP related structures and it has both internal as well as internal. I'm going to go through this is the entire presentation, but I won't be able to go through all of it because it's supposed to be 30 minutes. But very quickly to go over the thing that we have 18 members in this and two of the most active members are sitting in the audience, uh, Professor Brahim bin Mokrain and Khalid Muhammad. Uh, and there are several uh, professors in the whole process. So our entire section of that code uh, deals with, or I should say the code, deals from 1 to 17 section and you see the 16 as fiber reinforced structures. We have tried to change the, we have tried to change the name of that chapter to structures with FRP, but it keeps coming back fiber reinforced structures, although it has been approved. Um, so the code deals with um, a large number of topics within chapter 16, or section 16, and in 2025, we have updated it quite significantly from 2019 sections. And these are the changes that we have made. There are a total of 12 topics that I have put in there. Up to 11, it has one topic for each, and then there are a few smaller changes later. <coughs> we have allowed FRP bars in it now. And that also means FRP wraps. The reason for doing that is because now we have the material specifications for it. The maximum allowable stress limit in the, in, on, on, on sustained stress has been taken up from 0.25 to 0 0.30, the ultimate. Now keeping in mind that the strength of the bars have been going up from 600 to 800 to 1000 to 1200 and now 1400. So that factor 0.25 to 0.3 seems to be quite significant now. Development length we have made some changes in there. Uh, bent bars. And I'm summarizing this and there will be a large number of slides which are giving the detail. The main uh, change that has happened here is that now we have the test to do the strength of the bend itself. Initially we used to take the straight bar made the same way as the bends and people had difficulty figuring out what does that mean. So we used to test the straight bars, now the bend can be, bends can be tested and now the equations relate to that. We had an issue, or an error I should say, within our 2019 version of the code where the spacing between the bars was not quite similar to other codes, even our steel reinforced code, so therefore that was changed. Compression for FRP bar, that has still, that is still being quite a controversial or non-agreed topic I should say. Many people allow it, the others don't want to allow it. What we have done is, and we did that in 2019, that we will allow the forces in the FRP under compression to be accounted for in your resistance of the section. But that limit was only a strain of 0 0.002. 
So if I multiply it by 60 gigapascal, that is about 120 megapascal. So you divide that by 7, at 6 you end up getting whatever KSI is, 20 to 30 KSI, you are allowed that stress in compression. So we have now brought in the development length or the splice length. The FRP reinforcement in columns in the transverse direction, that is where I think we have managed to move forward quite nicely. We have done a huge number of tests, many of them under seismic loads. And the seismic loads means that we are testing them in the same way as we have the tests on steel reinforced columns done everywhere in the world almost in the same fashion that you first apply the axial load then you start applying the seismic load up and down and many tests have the axial load varying. So we have done about 100 tests in our lab and many other people have done a large number of large scale tests for example Manitoba has done it and some US tests are available. So we were able to extract from there the configurations that can be used for seismic resistance. One of the things that seems to have come out very loud and clear is that if you use the FRP bars as a longitudinal reinforcement, then your structure is going to be much softer, your capacity is going to be lower, but you still will be able to consider it as a seismically resistant structure, but with lower capacities. So we have tested a number of columns with the steel reinforcement as the longitudinal uh, reinforcement and then the spiral or the ties made of GFRP. And we find that that behavior seems to be superior to steel reinforced or steel confined columns. And the reason being that at about 0 0.002 to 0 0.002 strain in the lateral direction, steel has to start yielding. Therefore, the concrete gets the chance to dilate. The minute it dilates under high axial load, you can't recover. Whereas in the case of FRP, 0 0.002 strain is very small. It keeps going until about 0 0.002, I should say 0 0.02, 2 percent. And until that time it keeps providing the stiffness which is initially lower than steel but later on much higher than steel. So when you need the column under large deformations, FRP is there but steel may not be there if it has yielded. So I think that's where we find that we can depend on this material for large ductility and that is why we have also managed to give you some guidelines in the highly ductile structure. If you remember from the concrete, uh, steel reinforced concrete that we have the moderately ductile and then ductile and we have managed to do that in a similar fashion and we are giving some uh, distribution of steel. And then we have made couple of changes in slenderness ratio, two-way action and provisions for footing pile caps and uh, uh, pier cap. This is one topic in which although we have finalized the document, the steel reinforced columns or steel reinforced uh, concrete structures people are asking some serious questions whether it's the right thing to do or not and Brahim and I have been at it for some time now. And then we have the rehabilitation of steel bridges with uh, high, car, high modulus carbon. I think I'm going to drop here because if I go any further it becomes very technical graphs and all the rest of it. So thank you very much. Thank you.